What's up guys, Ryan Swanson here at District Cutlery. Today I'm going to show you how, how I sharpen the majority of my knives. That's with belt grinder. I run a 2x42, one for grinding here. I got another one back here for deburring. Generally running 120 grit ceramic belt, 240 grit silicon carbide, A30 Trizac. For most knives, this is what, this is, uh, basically this is all you need. You got some heavier damage, you can run down to an 80 grit maybe even a 60 grit ceramic if you've got some really, really bad chips in there. But then you get it into, you might need to thin the blade out. So today we're just gonna talk about simple edges, getting started. This is sort of like the basic introduction of how we do things. You may see some of my work on social media where I'm like thinning out these awesome Japanese blades. That's just a small percentage of the work we're doing here. Majority of, majority of the stuff we see, Wustoffs, Hankels, Shuns, Miyabis, you run of the mill what everybody has in the kitchen. So I've got the small order here, four Wustoff knives, all stainless steel, small chef knife, Santoku, slicer, and just a little utility knife. So I'm gonna go through the process. I'm gonna run my three belt process. I'm gonna do them all from this grinder right here. 120, 240, A30, and then I'm just gonna jump on my felt belt. I'm just gonna show you that, so I'm in kind of freehanding it, my belt's running this way, edge down, is edge trailing. Okay, I'm also going to show you that like, I've heard a lot of things about the burrs being, the burr is hard to remove with edge trailing, or you develop a bigger burr with edge trailing. I don't really see that, um, so maybe this might help dispel some of the myths, of, or that it's also harder to remove the burr when you're deburring an edge trailing blade. I don't see that too much, so we're going to go ahead and show you what that is. Sometimes, perhaps, if you're... I'm not going to say that this is the case, but it could be the case, is that you're trying, you might be over grinding your blades, and that's why the burr is so big, because you're removing so much material. So what you want to do is you don't want to, you don't necessarily have to get a big giant burr on your first belt. You can get it close, and then with your second belt, say your 240, there you might develop the full burr. So don't go all the way if you don't have to with your first belt. It's okay to do it, but if you're sitting on it and sitting on it and sitting on it and doing a million passes, you're just removing so much steel. Then if you look at the burr, you'll be like, oh, my burr is huge. It's that's generally because you're over grinding it. The goal of what we're doing here is to remove the least amount of steel possible. So talking about angles, I did another video previously about worrying about angles. So we're doing it freehand. We don't have any guides here. <clears throat> my rule of thumb, the better the quality of the steel, the lower the angle you can go. So basically, if you have, now I'm exaggerating here, these are Wustoffs, this is what I call the middle of the road. So, you know, basically, the lesser quality steel, the increase, the greater the angle is going to, you're going to be. So, you're going to grind it, the knives are super dull, you know, you're cutting a new edge into it. It doesn't matter if it's like, I mean, you want to be ballpark, I'm not saying it doesn't matter. But dispelling the myth of, you, you don't want to worry about if it's like 15 or 16 or like 17.875, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're in the ballpark with a good knife, you have a low angle. A medium knife, you have a medium angle. A lesser quality steel, you want to put a wider angle on it so the edge will hold and at least give the, sat, the customer some sort of satisfaction. So again, it's just like, don't sweat the numbers so much because once you're cutting a new edge into it with really dull knives, it doesn't matter. Now, you still want to you want to look at it and be like, okay, there it is, and get in the ballpark somewhere, but don't sweat it about like like the the knife will still work if it's 15 or 16 or 20 and 21. These things don't matter if you're just simply cutting vegetables. Okay, you're gonna worry too much about that instead of like the the key things, which is just like making sure it's consistent, making it all the way, making sure you're not grinding too much steel away, making you sure you removed all the damage. Making sure you remove the burr all the way. These are the important things to worry about. So I'm gonna go ahead, you might not be able to hear me or not, when the grinder comes on, it's gonna be kinda of loud. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna run again, 120, 240, 830, and I'll go ahead with my felt belt. So I used to run leather belts for deburring, but they stretch, so I, you know, I'm using these felt now with some blue compound. Trusty old blue here. And I swear you can get about 10,000 knives off of one of these felt belts. They just, they don't stretch. You want to clean them eventually. They do get a little gunked up. But that's good. The more compound in there, I feel the easier it is to remove the burr. 
So real quick, I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to show you just how quickly we're, we, we can move with a quick moving grinder, watching the pressure. Generally, I always wear a mask, okay? But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to say I'm going to hold my breath so I'm not breathing any dust, okay? But always mask up. You don't want to watch the dust. So what I'm doing, I'm feeling for the burr that I cut it in. I can see it. And again, it's not a big burr. It's, it's relatively small. You can barely see it, but you can feel it. All right? Put your fingers all the way on the blade. All right, those edges are all cut in. Another thing too, when you're watching your heat, what, what makes a lot of heat is the pressure. All right, so just let the belts do the work. Light pressure, and these belts cut real nice, especially a ceramic 120, they cut really, really nice. All right, so 240 silicon carbide, puts a, puts a, kind of puts a nice, nice kind of finish on there or medium finish. Try to keep your shop organized. Now, the finer the belt, the more heat it will, it will generate. So again, just light, light pressure, letting the belt do the work. All right, so all my blades are cut in. I'm gonna go and move and deburr right now. Felt belt, apply a little compound. Okay, again, I'm feeling for the burr. Now, that was one pass per side, the burr came off. So again, people talking like it takes a long time to remove the burr with edge trailing blades. It's just, it's not, if you have the speed and you have the power, it's not something you have to worry about. little bit by the tip right there now see the bottom of the of this blade that burr was removed but up by the tip because I'm feeling the entire knife just that tiny little burr on there you're gonna make sure so don't assume because the burr is off here it's not off here There you go, one pass per side. Just double check them. Again, 
There you go. Always making sure you get the burr off. But this one took two passes per side. The rest of the blades, one pass per side. And that burr came off real, real easy. I'm going to clean these blades off. Now take any of these. Push cutting. No problem. So that's it. Super quick, super fast, super consistent. You want to become good at sharpening, you need to use your hands and your eyes in concert. And just again, you, the, the lesser quality of the steel, the greater the angle it's going to be on your machine, whatever you're using. So happy customer, nice polished edge. The blue compound too, if you can see, if I can get a shimmer of hope there. Right, you, want, you want the customers to look at the knife and be like, ooh, you want them to look at right out of the package, oh, these look sharp, because they are sharp. But having a nice little shine on there never hurts. So that's it for today, a quick introduction to belt sharpening. Don't overthink it, just keep your hands consistent, using your eyes. Subscribe to our channel, check out our social media at District Cutlery, check out our website, districtcutlery.com, for great deals on great knives, and check out some more up-and-coming videos. Thank you, guys.